calling to say I... Welcome to a new video. Every link that you need is down in the video description below. Please do not forget to subscribe. Also, this video is possible thanks to the sponsorship of Patreons. You can also follow me there and you can check out the rewards and tiers that I have. Okay, so what you need here for software and hardware is first the 3D animation of a character, a grease pencil object, a digital tablet, and also speed lines. So we're going to create the speed lines with this very easy setup using a noise texture plus the nodes that you can see right here. You can put pause on the video, but it's very basic. We only have one expression in the X location, which is a uh, hash frame, which will tell Blender to play back uh, from the numbers on the timeline here in your location. After that, you can just set it up uh, right behind the face, in this case of our character. And you can also adjust using the ramp node right here. And you can also make spaces between them using the scale um, option that you have on the mapping. Of course, this is transparent, so that's what we want because we don't want the lines to be having any kind of background. This is a fantastic add-on which is called Magic Trails and you can find it here on Gumroad slash Colupsy and there is a free version and a paid version. And as you can see, once you can come here to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, you can add the Light Trails add-on and you have it here on your end panel. To click to add one Magic Trail and then you're going to select the shader, press OK and here's the shader with the magic trails apply. You can have as many as you want. Now you want to parent it to the sword in this case and wherever the sword moves it's going to leave that trail behind. Then you can select the trail and then go to the shader editor and you can start editing whatever you need from there. Now let's address how we create the impact frame. So we need to create a uh, empty grease pencil object once we have it on our outline we can come here into the shaders materials, create one new shader, which will be called Sketch. From there on, we're going to adapt our user interface, and we want to set the um, the dope sheet to grease pencil. Okay, with impact frame object selected on the outline, we want to resize our viewport and locate the camera to the position where we are going to make the impact frame. This is very important. So. I need you to press zero to look through the camera so you can have your character on the screen. Now we're going to join this ar area as well. And please do not forget you need to add a blank, a uh, blank grease pencil object so we can create the layers. And once you select the, that grease pencil object, you can press tab and then go into the draw mode. Once, once you get into the draw mode, please make sure that your radius to draw is uh, small enough. I'm also going to select a F ink pen, which is very important to make uh, solid strokes. Okay. And also we're going to change the color of the stroke because I, I want a contrast against my character. So if you start to draw, you see these jaggy lines. Please make sure that your origin is set to obviously origin and the view plane, the drawing plane is set to view. This is very important. And then obviously you're going to switch your tool to F ink pen, which is the most uh, reliable solid line. We want to make this probably around 12. Not this is too big. Let's uh, make sure that we have everything set in place. This is going to be red. This stroke is going to be red. And my radius is to be about two pixels off the screen. So let's start to draw. Now it is very important that you have this um, notion that whatever your playhead on the timeline is seated, 
this is where you're going to insert a new keyframe on your layers, on your impact frame layers, rather, here on the dope sheet grease pencil. Okay, this is very important. So now I'm going to create a second grease pencil layer, and this one I'm going to name impact lines. This is where we're going to draw our lines. So I'm sitting here on 221, and now I'm going to skip to 250 uh, number of the frame, and then I'm going to start to draw. Immediately after I do that, a new keyframe is created. Please start drawing your um, your speed lines, or rather your impact lines, from left to right. This is very important so that the effect works. If you need to zoom in or zoom out, press the end panel and uncheck camera lock to view. This will allow you to use your mouse, shift middle mouse, click press and drag, or roll your mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out. All right, so let's continue to draw because from here on it's just pure artistic style. So the impact frame is characterized because it's, it's got uh, heavy contrast and you need to define where your character is going to have these uh, darker areas, okay? You can check the URL link for uh, reference to impact frames. So we're sitting here on 251 and please take notice that we are still on the dope sheet editor and notice this impact frame impact line sorry layer it's going to have applied the build modifier okay so if we play back our animation we already know that we created everything on frame 250 i'm going to activate custom range and from there i'm going to set the start and end effect of the build modifier 220 to 250 all right that's cool so Frame 220 we start and frame 250 it ends. So I'm going to take my specific um, impact lines and then I'm going to draw them or rather I'm going to grab and move them back to 220. And now if I scrub my playhead I'm going to see that they are starting to draw. This is exactly what we want. So you can choose also different transition methods such as grow. I'm also going to uh, readapt the end frame to 240 and after that we want to switch the mode from sequential to concurrent, okay, concurrent. And if we play back, all right, we're getting our impact frames from left to right. This is exactly what we wanted, except for a couple of lines that are going to be drawn from right to the left. This is an intended effect, and this is because um, you start where you start your line and end where you obviously and your line. So this is looking pretty good. You're only halfway there. Let's continue. Let's uh, rename this uh, correctly. Now you can also hide your layers with this uh, eye icon. And if you play back and forth, you'll see that your character is continuing to move, but not your impact frame. So we're going to fix that in just a second. Let's switch this from impact face. Uh, that's a better name. So we can select here on the influence filter the layer that is going to be affected, which in this case is going to be the impact lines layer of the grease pencil object. I hope to make this very clear. I know I'm running and this video is kind of long, but you really need to get a grasp of the tools. So now I'm going to create a new layer. Why? Because we still need the transition from the original uh, 3D object or 3D camera to the 2D aspect of it. And for that, we need a background a white background material let's create one so instead of stroke we're going to switch this to fill okay uncheck that check fill and you have different options for textures like paper or gradient but in this case I'm going to go with solid and then I'm going to select a kind of white not all the way white uh, this is important you never use full white in anime and let's uh, rename this more appropriately white BK background Fantastic, let's send this to the background. Now, please notice that I'm sitting on frame 225. It is very important that when you work in Grease Pencil, you know where you're going to start to draw. So with the Grease Pencil object selected, press Tab and then select Draw. You're going to go into Draw mode and then I'm going to um, make sure that I'm sitting here on my white BK background layer. Click on any empty space and it's going to be filled. Everything is going to be filled here in the viewport. But do not worry, you have the opacity uh, slider to go from zero, which is transparent, to full opacity, which is one. You can uncheck use lights if you don't want the sword, in this case, to affect with its emission shader to your grease pencil object. So in my case, I'm going to leave that there. 
and I'm going to switch this to frame 225. I'm going to activate all of the other layers. Let's see how we're doing. Fantastic, it's looking good. But now we need to animate the um, transparency from 0 to 1. So I'm going to decide on frame 222 to be full range or full opacity. Press I exactly over the number so that they will insert a keyframe. Now in your graph editor, press T over those two keyframes and you're going to get the interpolation method select linear. And now we see that we are skipping somehow it pops. It doesn't fade from zero to one opacity. Somehow it is popping. And the reason for that is because there is a there's kind of a glitch that you can solve. So the way you solve that is to let's delete this. Um, let's try to move these keyframes so you can see. This is where it has to be at full opacity, but it doesn't happen. So let's delete that um, uh, grease pencil layer and let's reposition. Let's delete this as well. And let's reposition the frame where we want to start our effect. Okay, so this is frame 217. And then I'm going to create, create the new, or rather the old uh, white BK layer. Then I'm going to switch to draw mode. I'm going to get my bucket field tool again, select my white field material. I'm going to click on anywhere in the screen. And since I was sitting on frame 217, it will now pick it up correctly on the opacity um, slider. Okay, so let's send this back, uh, all the way down because remember this works like in Photoshop. So the lower layer, it's like the background. All right, so let's hover this opacity field, press I, it turns green, changes color in your version, in your theme, Blender theme. And now I'm going to scrub to 222, let's say, and then I'm going to press I while hover the opacity slider. Press I and then you will get automatically another keyframe. From there, press T while you hover on, on the graph editor to get a linear interpolation. Okay, this is working fine. Now the problem is solved. I, I am getting my transition from the white background from zero opacity to one. And the light, the light from the sword, the pinkish light that you see there, it's from the sword. Okay, so rather from his eyes. So if you have a dope sheet and then you switch to crease pencil like I am doing here in this editor space, you can see that the keyframes that we have already activated. Now you might probably have a different Blender theme, but this is a Blender theme that I will um, put for you to download later. So uncheck this um, lock and now we can manipulate any other layer that we want. So go back to edit mode because what we want to do now, let's switch this off so we can work nicely. What we want to do now is to select every line that we drew before and let's activate vertex opacity. Make sure that your overlays are active so you can see it as well as the um, draw vertex on the viewport. Okay, so I'm going to grab all of these and I'm going to move to another frame and my intention is to move the entire line, the, the entire uh, grease pencil lines that we drew, some frames to the left. Okay, so I'm going to go to sculpt mode because I don't want to deform or redraw anything again. I just want to re-sculpt uh, all of my uh, strokes. Okay, so it's very easy. Please do not forget that if you press N and then you come to view and then you unlock camera to view, unlock that, then you can use your mouse wheel, pressing shift, middle mouse button, pens, and rolling your mouse wheel will zoom in and zoom out. And this is important because we want to uh, use our sculpting tools with as much detail as we can. So this is fantastic. Let's select the impact frame grease pencil. And now I'm going to press F for the size of the brush. I am on sculpt mode while I have my impact frame grease pencil selected. Please do not forget uh, different objects have different interactions here in Blender. So that's very important. So what we want to do now is to start adjusting the movement that the animation of my 3D character originally has on this frame. Okay, so it's, it's just perfect we can uh, for it see where we're going to 
start and where we're going to end with the impact frame. Luckily, the impact frames only last for about one or two frames. They don't, they don't last that much. I wanted to do this kind of uh, dramatic effect lasting for more than five frames so that you can understand how this principle works. And I know I have been laying out foundations for like around eight minutes, but this is very important. So now that you have your lines already completed here in the uh, sculpt mode, while well, you have your impact uh, crease pencil selected, you can see now that you have two different frames. On frame 240, we have the sculpted version of this thing. Fantastic. Now we're going to go back into draw mode and then from the draw menu, select sequence. With both keyframes selected, you select keyframes, uh, I'm sorry, um, sequence, and then you're going to have a sequence that automatically interpolates between frame A and then frame B, like you're seeing right here. You're seeing the, sculpt, the sculpted version move back and forth from its original position, but we want to go a step further. Please activate your overlays. Make sure your vertex uh, selection is active. It will turn in this yellowish color. Please select Control A every every vertex, and now move your, um, your keyframes to another position. I deleted the previous interpolated ones, so we have this all clear. Now interpolate sequence once again. And now you have an interpolation and also a sculpt uh, deformation from frame 220 to 240. 10 frames is more than enough to for the eye to, to get, to really get this animation. And of course, it's following the original 3D uh, character animation. And this is how you create basically this effect. It's really nice. It's really awesome. There are a lot of other applications such as teleportations such as smeared frames such as wow i mean this just blows my mind this is how you really manage to produce 2d and 3d hybrid okay i'm going to be talking about this subject in a, in a in the next video but uh once you manage the tools like in this case in blender you are a pro so congratulations <laughs> you're really mastering all this is uh, skills, this 2D plus 3D skills, and I sincerely congratulate you. In the next video, I'll be talking about some issues with the X Arm anime, which was adapted for uh, as original creation for Crunchyroll, and there are a lot of issues there, technical issues and artistic issues that we are going to cover in the next video. I I had to program. Uh, this um, rig is set up for anime hair, for 2D anime hair um, for the next video, but uh, given that there are a lot of people asking me and me myself, I want to uh, publish uh, things related to X-Arm uh, production, um, this is really important, okay, because we're using the tools to artistic means. So our intention here in Active Motion Pictures YouTube channel is to help you understand the tools for the artistic means. That is to say that you know when to use some techniques more and some other times when you can join or gather forces with other 3D packages and 2D compositing packages uh, so that you can have your production really delivering the kind of quality that the audience expects. So. I don't know if you have seen this clip from um, part 44 from the Guilty Gear series, but I wanted to talk about this. And so I will be addressing this and other issues in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.